drink beer, it's good for you. Hello and welcome to the video. As promised, here is a follow-up video to my initial deep dive video that covered the new Brewmonk Wi-Fi models. Within this video, I'll be sharing my first brew experience with the new Brewmonk B40 Wi-Fi model for your interest. So let's get started. Firstly, let's look at the Brewmonk's Wi-Fi side, which is run via a website portal. So as such, you can run it from any device that has a browser, like a mobile phone, tablet or a computer. Personally, I used my mobile phone during the brew, as you can see here, but set up and saved the recipe on my computer beforehand. The app at this point runs your reminders for the brew and tells the system what it should be doing in terms of heating level and timing, and it also allows you to record the important details for the brew itself, though it does not handle the recipe calculations side at this point. So I use Brew Harvard to handle this side for me as per usual. As you can see, the brew is set out into different steps that you can set up before you start the brew. What is nice here is that everything is laid out in a very intuitive way, making it very easy to get started. Even like me, it is your first brew with the system. Each step of the brew is covered by this guided experience, which begins with adding and heating your mash water. You are then reminded to add your crushed grain bill before entering the mashing phase, which is all timed with virtual reminders of how far you are at any given point within the process. You are then reminded to lift the grain basket and sparge before then entering into the boil stage and there can be alerts for each timed hop addition too. The information shown here is updated every 30 seconds which feels adequate to me. The reminders are also given on the main controller's screen and to proceed further you must hit the OK button on the controller which is naturally a very good thing. The controller's timer is updating itself every 4 seconds which seems a little unusual but acceptable. You will also note that during the heat up phase, the system allocated its full 2.5 kilowatts worth of heating power, whereas during the mash, once at temperature, it maintains it uses 1.8 kilowatts, which is smart. The system then reverts back to its full power of 2.5 kilowatts to preheat and maintain a boil. The timer will also only start once the temperatures are reached, so in this case it is waiting for a boiling temperature before starting the timer that I have preset for a 30 minute boil. Let's now move on to the brewing experience. For this first brew I have a grain bill of just under 4.5 kilos, which I'm using for this 19 litre batch, and as you can see there is quite a bit more room for more malt and more volume within the B40 Wi-Fi brewing system. The grain basket for this system is said to be able to hold up to 8 kilos of malt, though it would be realistic to realise that if you do fill it then your efficiency will be compromised, just like is the case with any other brewing system. Certainly you would have no issues brewing a 30 litre batch here, as the kettle size is 40 litres, giving plenty of headspace. One thing I have become rather used to not having within the mash is a centre pipe, as both Kegland and Grainfather's latest brewing system models, which I use an awful lot, have both gone the route of removing the centre pipe work in favour of basket itself, offering overflow control. I have to be honest and say that whilst I prefer to not have a centre pipe, due to the extra freedom of movement that it allows, having one there for this brew was not really any hardship as such. It was easy to control my stainless steel mixer, as you can see, to avoid it. Naturally, I did use brewing systems that had a centre pipe for quite some years before the current trend of removing them. So for me, this is not a deal breaker as such, but you should weigh this up yourself if you were between buying this system versus another. After mixing all the grains in, I then pushed down the centre pipe and added the top plate, ensuring that everything was pushed down and ready for the mash. My hands have become rather accustomed to heat over the years, but I would suggest this is done with gloves on, really. Either way, we are now ready for the actual mash. The brew bunk systems are supplied with a glass lid as shown, but as I am filming my brews I tend to leave them off. The downside here without a lid is that it takes a little bit longer to heat the system up. Not included with a Brewmonk, but recommended at the very least, is a short piece of hosing as shown here. The Brewmonk's recirculation arm has barbing ready for it, and the length that you will need will vary depending on your grain bill size. However, you could simply use a longer piece that will cover all grain bill sizes, which some manufacturers supply as standard. This is so that your mash is not splashing into the system and creating a lot of foam and oxygen. 
I personally suggest buying some meters worth and then cutting off what you need as you come to it. Suitable hosing is certainly not expensive and can easily be obtained at any decent homebrew store. This mash went without any issues and I later found out that my numbers were all on point so all good here. It was then time for the sparge, so I started off by lifting the basket up to the first feet initially, and then further up to the second in a bit of a clumsy way to see how easy it could recover, which was actually nice and easy, which is nice and reassuring. I then completed the sparge and everything went to plan. After the sparge I then started to heat to the boil and found that the brew monk did this in a pretty reasonable time. The B40 boasts a 2.5 kilowatt heating system, which is a little more than the 2.4 kilowatts offered by most smaller home brewing systems. Naturally these power numbers are based on the use of a 240 volt supply. Here in Norway we have just 230 volts, so the power is reduced a little for me here, but the difference is not large of course, and applies to all brewing systems that I have access to. As you can see the brewing system had no issues in reaching a good level of boil. As I mentioned earlier, within the BrewMonk Wi-Fi portal you can set the system's power level when ramping and also maintaining temperature for both the mash and the boil. I found that the standard boil settings of 2.5 kW to ramp up to the boil and then 2 kW to maintain worked well for this brew size. I would imagine though that for a maximum batch size brew you may wish to have both at 2.5 kW. The BrewMonk Wi-Fi brewing systems do not come provided with any cooling solutions, so first of all I brought out my favourite immersion chiller which is the Skrilla from Jaded Brewing in the USA. By using this immersion chiller stirring method shown, the wort went from boiling point down to 80 degrees Celsius in under one minute, which is in keeping with the results that I enjoy with other brewing systems too. This cooling step allowed me to quickly cool the entire wall ready for a hop stand that I am performing here with just under 150 grams of hops. As this system does not have a false bottom I decided that it would be wise to help the filter out and also aid in clarity by performing a powerful whirlpool using a drill in this grandfather stainless steel whirlpool paddle. This is also a fun step for sure which is made all the better by those awesome hop aromas that heat your nostrils as you drill. After the hop stand it was time to cool the wort down further to yeast pitching temperature and as the brew monk has a camlock fitting on its recirculation pipe it was easy to attach my old grandfather G30 counterflow chiller that I have converted to camlock fitting some years back. The first step shown here is where I get things cooling down enough to then cool and transfer at the same time into my fermenter. Please do understand that I could have done both cooling parts with the immersion chiller first shown, but not the whole walk quickly with the counterflow chiller. I personally prefer using both of these chillers as I do for this brew, it's just personal preference. The transfer into my fermenter worked well and thankfully there was no real slowdown resistance from the system's filter as you can clearly see here. The wall boiling would have certainly helped as within a system of this size it will free up and fairly evenly distribute the hot batter along with the rest of the trap. So as such it is a useful practice when brewing with a system that does not have a false bottom. Even if it is a small system like this one where no wall pour cone is going to be evident. Here are the last moments of transfer within the brew monk and you can see that the bazooka filter did a good job despite all of the hops in place at the bottom of the system. It may look pretty nasty but I can assure you that the smell was actually very good. All in all I was rather satisfied with the results from this first brew with the new Brewmonk Wi-Fi system. Do check out my Brewmonk initial deep dive video if you have not already and keep an eye out on my channel for more Brewmonk related content in the near future. I look forward to hearing your thoughts about this system within this video's comment section. I do hope that you found this video useful, informative and interesting. If so, why not consider liking and subscribing. For further support you can join the channel's Facebook group and if you would like to support the channel then check out the channel's merchandise store as all profits go back into the channel. Until next time, happy brewing!